versus 2 replay commentary with me commanding Tardis, Reptilicus commanding Armenia, Toop uh, commanding Carthage, and Fenicus commanding Egypt. My Tardis build is visible, but we can't really see the builds of Egypt and Armenia, so I'll go over them as we start. It's the Battle of the Pyramids, a fairly balanced and nice map, I think. Also, pretty nice to look at, although it's a bit barren. So, here is our setup. Uh, most of our missile cavalry on this flank, because this is the unshielded side of the enemy. Raiding horse here, and wisely so, because these scythe chariots are presenting themselves as a target. We are deploying slightly behind, I believe the deployment zone was around here, so we are deploying slightly behind to give our horse skirmishers more time to work. We are also deploying in depth, defending from chariots with these eastern cataphracts. And let's go over the builds real quick. My build is 6 raiding horse, 4 oathsworn, 4 celtic warriors, 2 spear warriors, 2 thracian warriors, uh, Reptilicus's build is 4, or actually 5 Eastern Cataphracts, 4 Eastern Archers, and 5 Persian Hoplites with a Noble Spearman General, and 3 of these Armored Horse Archers. We are coming up against 3 Hellenic Royal Guard, 2 African Pikes, 1 uh, mercenary Gallic warriors on the flanks here, 4 Libyan infantry, 2 scythe chariots, could be problematic, Cretan archers, 3 of those, Egyptian archers, Thurio spears, Galatian swords, royal peltests, and camel spears on the flanks. So, the main killing power in our enemy's army, these chariots, by a wide margin. Now, not too worried about the pikes, because we do have a lot of missiles, here we go. The lag was pretty notice noticeable in this battle, so a lot of weird things happened. Units not responding and micro not being as effective at it as it usually is. So I'm sending in these guys against the Numidian, uh, no, the Numidian mercenary Numidian cavalry. Just, um, just because they have better shields, these guys have a higher rate of fire. And they're upgraded, so they have 9 shots per minute, while my guys have 7 shots per minute. I have the numerical superiority and I want to be able to throw javelins into these chariots when they are standing still, just do some HP damage because that's going to be important in the late game. If I manage to damage them a little bit it could be potentially extremely important. So now I'm going to charge in my raiding horse, they have a decent charge. These Numidians are not ready for it, but it's going to send in his chariots because these chariots are absolutely going to tear apart the raiding horse. On the other side here, um, Reptilicus is moving up his armored horse archers, and I am... We are talking, but we didn't coordinate this. It just happened. So I'm going to send my raiding horse over here to deal with cavalry, and he's going to engage in a skirmish fight with his archers here. Archers here. So him taking the engagement there is going to enable me to swing around on that side. So good teamwork there. His mercenary Numidian nobles got the worst of that engagement. One unit is almost completely gone, but I had to pull out because of this noble cavalry. Chariots got a few kills, only two, but hopefully I did some damage to them. Reptilicus moving in and out and skirmishing. I'm doing the same here against these camel spears. Taking some of them down. These guys really can't compete with the raiding horse, even in melee, but they can be annoying if they're able to use their spare, their scare effect against mine or or a Reptilicus cavalry while it's engaged, so I want to take care of these camel spears, and they will fall very quickly to missiles, as you see here. Um, Reptilicus' armored horse archers are taking a beating both from Thurios and from Egyptian archers, but taking down Egyptian archers and focusing fire on slightly different units. Here, his Numidian, noble, his Numidian cavalry were caught, they are still in the fight with four men remaining, but now they shattered. So this unit is starting to go down as well. These units aren't massively important, they're more annoying. It's nice to get them off the field, but uh, it's very limited how many kills they can get. Camel Spears taking a whole lot of damage. 
It's not a good idea to run after skirmish and cavalry like this. It's just a good way to lose your to lose your uh, camels. I'm going to start chasing the camels because I want to kill the camels and I want to get into these chariots and deal with them. Egyptian archers going down without really doing much, but these uh, Thuria spears have managed to kill some horse archers. So have these Egyptian archers. Thurios, very, very flexible units. Now we're just hanging back here with the rest of our army, trying to do as much damage as possible with these trolling units. And some nice kills on the armored horse archers. One unit of uh, camel spears down, trying to, to destroy the last unit of camel spears here, and also trying to get into position to do some damage to his, to his uh, scythe chariots. Still have a bit of a cold, as you can hear. <laughs> now, um, these camel spears are almost neutralized, not having really done much. These chariots are both tiring themselves out, and they are taking a javelin here and there. Not yet, but they will soon. So, at this point, my raiding horse are running out of ammunition. Pretty nice kills on them. So... I'm just going to send them in to try to do some damage to the chariots and to create some mayhem in the lines of the Egyptian player. Now we... At this point we're basically just coordinating what we're going to do. I'm saying I'm going to remove the mercenary Numidian cavalry and the camels. He's going to remove the Egyptian archers. Um, priority is of course doing as much damage as possible to these chariots with both javelins and trying to catch them in melee so some of these javelins must have hit they are taking fire so uh, he's going to intercept me here and chariots are just going to murder raiding horse but I'm out of ammunition so I'm going to try to stop them and what I was going for as well was I was hoping that uh, it was going to put some pre uh, to put some pressure off Reptilicus here, and I was hoping he was going to try to send missiles into his own troops here because that could, that could damage his, um, that could damage his chariots quite a bit. But the chariots are just mopping the floor with my uh, raiders. Over here, he's sending in Cretans to support, so I'm pulling away with the raiders over here. But still, the raiders managed to get some nice kills, neutralize two cavalry units, get some kills on this. Egyptian archer unit and hopefully damage the chariots a bit so I don't think it was maybe it wasn't the smartest thing to do to sacrifice them like that but but uh, it might it might have been worth it it's hard to know since I don't know how much damage they actually did to the chariots but but uh, still now we are um, we are agreeing that it will probably be easier to take out the Carthaginian player first and by doing so we'll try to draw the chariots away from the Egyptian player. So I'm going to start to move my units. First we're going to move forward. I think uh, Reptilicus is going to start taking some some uh, damage on his cataphracts pretty soon. So I'm going to turn counterclockwise, I believe it is, towards, towards uh, the right here. I'm going to try to smash the flank of the Carthaginian player while Reptilicus holds it. And since we have cataphracts, they'll be able to stop these scythe chariots. Here's some more trolling with uh, some armored horse archers, just trying to catch these guys. But here you have the problem with units going for the center of the unit they're giving attack orders on. That means that they're going to, instead of charging here, they're going to go into the center of this unit and just rout, not do anything. That's just how the game works. Now, as you can see, me and Reptilicus are coordinating our armies a bit better than our opponents are. I don't know if they are using voice chat or they're just two guys that dropped in randomly, so might be a bit of a handicap there. Now, these uh, Eastern Cataphracts are shielding my infantry units while I'm moving them around the flank. Um, as you can see, the... Uh, the Egyptian and Car Carthaginian player are playing very, very static, very defensively. I think uh, the Egyptian player is hoping for uh, these chariots to do most of the killing. They are getting very tired, so they are going to be a lot slower and easier to intercept, which is good. 
Noble Cavalry do making the mistake of chasing after my raiding horse. I'm just going to move as close as possible, trying to throw javelins. I am going to lose some men like this, but the exchange is wor the exchange is worth it, I think, because these noble cavalry are going to take quite a few casualties, and these guys are running out of missiles. So there isn't much missile. Uh, there aren't many missile units to take care of that that haven't already been taken care of. So I figure getting some kills on these noble cavalry is going to be well worth it. Always nice to have a cavalry advantage. So Reptilicus is focusing fire on these mercenary Crete archers. These Eastern archers are inferior, but it doesn't look like uh, it doesn't look like the Carthaginian player has started firing at them just yet. While Reptilicus is focusing fire, um, they are shooting at the person Hoplite. So not the best strategy strategy there. Over here, the raiding horse are getting into melee with the noble cavalry. They're not going to do well in melee against charging noble cavalry, obviously. Uh, they might get a kill or two, but but uh, I just sacrificed these units to do some hit point damage. They are out of ammunition and not much more they can do. They could have gone for rear charges and stuff, but they're going to draw these guys further away from the battlefield while we are turning around here and separating these two armies. Raptilicus is just going to keep a light holding force here. And the Egyptian player has a very immobile army, so it's going to be difficult for him to flank Reptilicus. And I am posting my entire army on my enemy's flank. In position to send in all these old sword, he can't turn his pikes to face me because of Rept because Reptilicus is holding him here. And now I'm able to send in my four old sword units for a nice little charge. Using Celtic warriors to stop the charge, not the uh, not a bad idea. Sending Libyan infantry afterwards, it's a pretty effective ways of do uh, way of doing it. But there are too many units here. Cataphracts are also moving in, and I'm just going to keep these guys in reserve for a little while. And here it comes, the side chariots. Now the chariots have lost a chariot, so that's very good. And they are also, perhaps more importantly, they are exhausted. So they will be 20% slower and easier to intercept. Their melee attack will also be 50% lower. And I think that should make it much easier to stop them, that they're, uh, they are slower. They should have less power in punching through. So Reptilicus is going to move through the gaps here, created by my Oath Sword. And he's going to chase away the general and charge straight into the scythe chariots. Now some of the units that can stop scythe chariots as you can see are these cataphracts and he manages to take them down quite nicely on the charge. Another unit stopping the cataphract so my infantry is safe. Mostly anyway. Uh, I'm going to charge in, pull back my swords and Thracian warriors and then I'm going just to charge with my Spear warriors using counter cavalry tactics, and for some reason they don't. Because I activated counter cavalry tactics, it looks like they didn't throw their javelins in time, which was annoying because I needed to get the javelins on the chariots. This unit is routing, and this unit is getting stopped by the spear warriors, so they'll be able to take it down fairly effectively. I put my guys in uh, shield wall pretty soon, try to increase their bracing a bit so these side chariots are going to get stopped and that's the end of the chariots with only 70 something kills so pretty bad for a chariot unit but they were under a lot of fire early in the game and charged by cataphract so that's what's going to happen now reptilicus is holding here sending in his chariots to finish these egyptian archers and when they are gone his eastern archers are going to reign supreme on the battlefield which is going to enable us to take care of the pikes. Now, look at these pikes here. I'm not giving attack orders on these pikes. I'm just putting my guys in shield wall and holding off these guys while the pikes are kind of poking on my old sword and these guys are coming in for rear charges. So, the pikes are hardly getting kills here. Not really being effective. The old sword are, of course, being effective. Getting some pretty nice rear shots in on these, these uh, African pikes with Reptilicus's Eastern Archers. Nice kills on all of these guys. 
can do very well for themselves if they are kept out of melee and kept out of fire because they really don't have any armor. So the Carthaginian player is almost neutralized, destroyed, and the Egyptian player reacts way too slowly. It's too late to do anything. Reptilicus is holding him here with these cheap Persian hoplites. All of my good melee units are able to charge in and attack from the rear and from the flanks of these units. Thurior Spears rushing in, but it's too little too late. At this point we have basically defeated these two armies by concentrating on the Carthaginian player, taking away the two most important units that the Egyptian player brought, and now their defensive capabilities are severely limited, as are their offensive capabilities. So concentrating our forces like this, me concentrating on the flanks while Reptilicus was holding here, turned out to be very effective. Now it might have been a better idea to split the chariots uh, and to try to engage the cataphract, because they didn't really, the only thing we had that could stop these chariots were the cataphracts, so I have no idea why these two players didn't try to take out the cataphracts with for example, pushing up and using missile fire, or getting some spears in, or even trying to stop them with uh, cheap or light cavalry and then charging in spears. I have no idea because they really needed to. We needed to kill the chariots, and they needed to kill the cataphracts. <laughs> because if they would have managed to kill the cataphracts, then the chariots could just basically they could have done what they wanted with my melee force and with with the Reptilicus's uh, person hoplites. They would just get run over. But here. Sending in against these, uh, the blob is very real at the moment. A lot of units blobbing up here, but I have enough units that I can send them in for some rear charges around the edges. Going to go for his general, the, the Carthaginian player's general, with my with my spear warriors. And Reptilicus is holding the Egyptian player here with his very cheap. Uh, Persian Hoplite units, moving them into square formation, very useful in a uh, defensive, uh, defensive uh, situation. So it's going to increase their melee defense, and more importantly perhaps it's going to increase their base morale so they'll hold for longer. Hellenic Royal Guard is of course slaughtering Persian Hoplites from the front. I just need to finish off the, these Carthaginian units and these Hellenic Royal Guard and I'll be able to rush over and help because it's maybe Reptilicus can finish off these units by himself but his main killing power was in his cataphracts and I believe they are gone yeah they are gone and he does have some ammunition left on his archers which is using on his on the Hellenic Royal Guard but the main killing power left on the battlefield now is my Oath Sword and my Thracian Warriors so we're going to have to use those to good effect, and it looks like we're going to be able to. Some Celtic warriors are starting to get enough of the fight, so I'm going to use Race Banner. And, uh, no, Rally. I'm going to use Rally with my general. And try to take out his Royal Peltas general, which is exhausted. So getting some pretty hefty combat debuffs. 50% less melee attack, so now they only have 32.5 melee attack, which is... Pretty, pretty bad. Running after his general, trying to catch him with my spears. And just waiting for this blob to finish up basically. Fast forward here. Um, over here, the pikes are struggling to kill the Persian Hoplites. Galatian swords getting quite a lot of kills, but now they're attacked by noble spearmen in the rear. Reptilicus' general is being sandwiched here a bit, and the Noble Spears are going to die a little bit, but again, pikes offensively, not too, not too effective. Hellenic Royal Guard holding out, getting kills against these cheap, uh, cheap Hoplites, but it's way too late. I've finished off Carthage, and now it's just time to move in, so we GG, well played, and that is basically it for this battle. Now, uh, I hope I was able to comment. It's, it's more, more difficult commenting alone on two versus twos uh, to get everything that's happening and such, but I, I hope I did an okay job of, uh, of showing you everything that went on and the thought process behind it. So, the main idea was basically just to, to uh, first 
protect, keep, keep back, uh, allow ourselves time to do skirmishing against important units, against cavalry and uh, against the anything that could stop our cavalry. And when that was done, we picked the weakest opponent, which seemed to be Carthage, which uh, necessitated that the Egyptian player supported Carthage with his chariots, and then we could deal with the chariots and the Carthage player in the forest over here without the chariots having much of an impact. So, fairly happy with how the planning and the execution went here. The game was a bit slow because of lag, but still an okay game. I'm just rushing in here to finish off this Hellenic Royal Guard, and the game is over. So, always fun to see the result screen. Now I got the most kills, yay. Reptilicus got... but I also deployed the most men. Uh, the Carthaginian player was absolutely smashed. He lost 1546 men and killed 814. The Egyptian player did a li little bit better. He killed 1232. Uh, Reptilicus deployed 1500 and killed 1126. Oathsworn did very well, Braining Horse did pretty well, Celtic Warriors did okay as well, Thracian Warriors, everything did just fine. On the Carthaginian side, these Hopitaes did okay, the Noble Cavalry did okay, um, Mercenary Cretans, not really impressive, but the rest of the, uh, the rest of the army wasn't really cost effective. So the Egyptian player, Chariots, just failed massively. Royal Peltasts always do well, Galatian Swords, nice units, uh, some nice kills from the Hellenic Royal Guard, but these kills were against Persian Hoplites, so not really a good exchange there. Noble Spears, 102 kills, not bad, some okay kills on these horse archers. Cataphracts did okay, most important job they, they did were stopping these those chariots, could have gone very differently, very diff differently if the chariots were able to survive. Eastern archers very cost-effective in this battle, and the Persian hoplites did okay as well as meat shields and holding forces. So, had a lot of fun on this TV too. I hope you had some fun watching it, and I'll see you again on the battlefield.